everyone, this is Marco and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be sculpting a Jurassic World T-Rex in the same scale as the Mattel figures. I was commissioned this piece by Milliput themselves, which is really cool. Also, I'll be basing my sculpt on this Horizon Kit T-Rex, which was a kit made in the 90s based on the Stan Winston maquette. I'd like to warmly thank my good friend Viet for supplying me this amazing kit, along with other Mattel toys. Now that picture you can see I'm using for reference is a Tippet Studio T-Rex render, made for the Jeep advert. As always, I'll start by making the core out of masking tape. Then I'll be sculpting all the details with Milliput Epoxy Putty. You can find a link in the description for the materials I've used. So basically, I'll be copying all the details as well as I can from the Horizon kit, but I'll be tweaking it a little bit to make it look more like the T-Rex from Jurassic World. I don't know if you know this, but the T-Rex from Jurassic World has got a different design from the original Jurassic Park film. If you want to make your own T-Rex figure, feel free to pause or slow down the video if you need to. You could always take a screenshot of this render, so you can print it out at home and use it to get accurate proportions just like I do in my videos. It's very important that you get all the proportions correct, as it will help the figure later on to balance and stand. I would like to mention that I'm working on another cool project based on this one. If you've been following my Instagram, you'll know what I'm talking about. Basically, when I completed the sculpt of this figure, I made a mold of it. If you want to know what this project is, you can follow my Instagram and wait till the end of this video because I'll be talking more about it later. So now's the time to sculpt the details. Of course, I'll be using the Milliput Epoxy Putty. Make sure you mix both parts thoroughly so you get an even color. You'll be needing some water and some sculpting tools as well. Also, this is when the Horizon Kit comes in very useful because I'll be copying all the textures and details. So we're using it as reference, sculpting everything by eye, not using any kind of texture pad. So you start by blocking out the shape, adding more material bit by bit. With the Epoxy Putty, you have about an hour working time. So I suggest you work on smaller areas so you get enough time to get all the details right before it starts curing. You can see that I'm using a toothpick to do all the little details as it's got a finer tip. You can see that I have not sculpted an eye yet and that's because I'm going to use some glass eyes. I bought them on eBay and printed out a picture of a T-Rex eye and stuck it to the back. Glass eyes create a sense of realism by adding depth once the eye is positioned into the socket, we can then sculpt the eyelids around it. What is really cool about this Milliput Epoxy Putty is that you can smooth it out with water, which really helps softening the details. As you can see, now I'm starting to texture the sculpt. I do this with a toothpick by poking the material, creating an illusion of scales. I'm also sculpting all the scales around the lip individually. And don't forget to add the trademark Jurassic World T-Rex scars. So once you're happy with the sculpt, then you can turn it around and do the other side. I find that taking a picture of the sculpt and then editing it and flipping it with a mirror effect, you get a perfect copy of the sculpt that you've already done, but mirrored. So all you have to do is just copy from that picture to get your symmetry on point. So after the other side is complete, then we can sculpt the inside of the mouth and make the teeth. I'm making the teeth with toothpicks and I'm gluing them to the inside of the mouth with super glue. Be sure to make them in different sizes. So once the teeth are in place, we can sculpt the inside of the mouth. I'll be basing the sculpt again on this Horizon kit. You start by mixing a fresh batch of Milliput Epoxy Putty and pushing it down inside the mouth cavity, especially on the roof of the mouth. Also, I'm using a toothpick again to sculpt in all the details. You can sculpt the inside of the mouth if you want to make a figure that has its mouth open. So if you want a figure with its mouth closed, you can skip this step. So now is the time to make the bottom jaw. We will be basically repeating the same procedure as earlier, sculpting one side and then repeating it mirrored on the other side. As you can see, I am sculpting the bottom jaw with the head on top, so I can get a perfect fit. This is extremely useful if you want to make an articulated jaw, or if you just want to have different variations of the same figure, once it's been molded of course. So maybe you could make a couple of T-Rexes, like from the Lost World, one roaring and one with its mouth closed. So the bottom jaw has got some bigger scales right under the eye. 
So I started with those and then made my way making the scales smaller all around them. Also, the lips have bigger scales too, so make sure you sculpt those individually. Again, just like the top lips. Generally, the size of the scales on the bottom jaw are smaller than the ones on the head. So I'm just poking the material with the tip of the toothpick. Then you can smooth it out with a soft brush dipped in water. Make sure you wash the brushes, otherwise they'll get really hard. So there we go, one side of the jaw is now complete. You can repeat the same procedure as the head and sculpt the other side. I made a couple of pegs in the head and the jaw and a couple of sockets on the neck so they can be molded separately. Once everything's cured, then we can start sculpting the neck. Again, I'll be sculpting one side and then the other side later. Make sure you've got really good reference pictures so you can replicate all the folds in the skin. You really want to make the folds in the skin look soft and create the illusion of the skin being compressed and stretched over time. Let's remember that this particular T-Rex is about 30 years old, so you really want to make the skin look aged. That can be achieved by making deeper textures and then soften them out with a brush abundantly soaked in water. If you want to achieve a more realistic look, you can base the skin folds and texture on that of an elephant. Once the other side of the neck is complete, we can start sculpting the rest of the body. We really want to make the musculature stand out and look organic. By scoring the chest, we can create the illusion of a rib cage. You want the rib cage to be quite smooth. We'll be sculpting the details on top, so it looks like the bones look wrapped around by the skin. It isn't necessary sculpting all the scales individually. All you have to do is just score a lot of wrinkles in the skin, with the exception of the texture on the belly. The crocodilian scales and texture really need to stand out. That is a trademark feature of the Tyrannosaurus Rex from Jurassic Park. Before you start the next step, make sure that the putty is completely cured because you don't want to mess it up by holding it and poking it with your fingers. The curing process can be sped up by heating the material with a hairdryer. Be extra cautious when you adopt this method. So room temperature milliput usually cures in about four hours, but by heating it up, it will speed up quite a bit and it will roughly start setting after about 30 minutes. Make sure you don't heat it up too much or it will compromise the quality of your sculpt. As you can see here, I've already started sculpting the feet. I'm sculpting this section separately so it can be molded individually. Make sure you make the feet look quite bird-like and that's achieved by adding scoots on the toes. Those are quite big scales, so these need to be sculpted individually. The closer the scoots get to the end of the toe, the bigger the scales get. That is the main texturing on the feet. The rest is just skin folds. The rest of the texture compared to the scoots is quite soft. By shaping the milliput into cone shapes, we can create the claws. I did also add a bit of texture to the claws by scoring some lines in them, so that they would pick up some paint later in the painting stage. Now the T-Rex has big, strong, powerful legs, so we're going to make very big and strong muscles. Once the shape is done, we can start texturing. The knee has got bigger scales, and the scales gradually get smaller throughout the rest of the leg. Now the arms are quite tricky. Because they're so small, the texture is quite fine. First of all, I started with the tip of the fingers. I'm adding very small amounts of material on the fingers, and scoring horizontal lines, creating a miniature version of the scoots we did on the feet earlier. The rest of the arm has very fine texturing again, just like the foot. Again, I'm sculpting the tail separately. I've created a peg just like what I did with the neck. However, I am sculpting it attached to the body right now to make sure the seams aren't visible. The texturing on the tail has more pronounced wrinkles. After the molding stage is complete, we can assemble all the parts. And this is the sculpt finished and it is now ready to paint. We'll be using paint brushes, of course, some Arteza outdoor acrylic paint and water that so we can bring in the sculpt and we'll start with a brown base coat. We can create a brown color by mixing all the primary colors. Then I did a lighter brown and covered it again. After the base color is complete, we can paint the inside of the mouth and then we can paint the teeth with a mixture of yellow and white. Then I dry brushed some beige color on the head. Then I used black for some details like the striping and just general shadows. So once the head's complete, 
we can move on to the body. We'll do the same beige dry brushing as we did earlier and we'll add a light beige colour to the belly and the underneath of the neck and tail. I painted the scars with pink and white. We can conclude the painting by finishing off with the stripes. And now our figure is complete. Now I'm going to talk about the new project. For the moulds of the Rex, I cast a foam version and put a bendy wire inside. I gave it a sound box, recorded a custom T-Rex Raw and made a head out of fast cast resin. Now this is a prototype, but I'm planning to make my dream Jurassic Park toy based on the Kenner figures, so they would feel rubbery. They would have accurate paint jobs, chomping action features and posability. I am currently finding the correct material and I finally found the perfect material. It's rubbery, it's made of silicon and it should look something like this. Stay tuned and subscribe for more information. If you like this toy project, please let me know. I was thinking of maybe starting a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe. If you're interested in the project and if you want to buy one, please let me know in the comments down below and we'll see if we can make this dream come true. Thanks for watching.